Hey guys, good morning. I'm a little croaky <clears throat> because I'm not a morning person, but I've got to get up. Today is the zero waste talk in Bristol. Whoop whoop. Um, you just caught me hanging out by the loo. It's just such a funny setup. I quite like it. You can chat to people whilst they're on the loo, whilst chilling by a bar. Um, so yeah, we're heading out there in about 40 minutes, so I'm just getting ready and trying to remember what I've got to say. I'm not really doing much of a talk, I'm just introducing people and saying a little bit about me. Um, but for some reason, I've worked myself up into a, oh my gosh, I must remember my lines! Um, but it'll be fine. I'm just really excited to meet Bea Johnson as well, it's going to be so cool. And we've also got two other great speakers, Lizzie Carr, who is a paddleboarder, um, who has been highlighting the plastic pollution problems in our, our riverways and canals um, and she's on a sort of plastic patrol mission um, and she seems really cool and who else? Oh yeah, Michelle from City to Sea um, she's been living with a lot less plastic since 2008 so let's do this What have I gotta lose? We've arrived! <laughs> I'm wearing a little people tree outfit by the way, it's a jumpsuit from their latest collection which I'm in love with. It's made from organic cotton and just so cool. I'm just waiting for the sunshine to come out. We've just arrived at the auditorium, everyone is setting up their stalls. So we've got some reusables over there from Eco, we've got Bristol Waste and City to Sea over there. And that's my husband strolling across my shot in the background there, so professional. Um, so yeah, that's the screen and we're gonna have some slides up there. And then this is where everyone's gonna be sitting. <laughs> I'm here with Bear Johnson, the queen of zero waste. I don't know how else to refer to you, but you pretty much started... No, I'll take queen. Yeah. I'll take okay, queen. <laughs> You're basically the reason why I got onto the zero waste journey. So I feel like this is a bit of a geek out moment for me. And you know when you just meet someone who's had a huge influence in your oh, life? Oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> we can pet each other. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm to touch you. Can I touch you? Don't be awkward. <laughs> And that's the interview over. So I asked my viewers to send in some questions. So we've just got a couple of questions that we'll rattle through. First of all, I was going to ask you, because you've just started this European tour, you've done quite a few talks already. Um, are you finding there's a growing interest in zero waste? Now? Most definitely. Yeah. Did you expect that from the beginning? No, of course not. And my husband even did not want me to start a blog. He said, you know, you write a blog, you're just going to get hammered by people, you're going to get criticised. And I did not agree with them. I said, I really believe that it's important to share what we do so that we can share the solutions that we found so that if someone wants to do zero waste, they have the solutions right there. I had to test a lot of things. I had to Google a lot of things. Uh, for example, I uh, learned how to can. So I picked up the phone and said, Mom, you need to teach me how to can. I no longer want to buy tomato cans. We never ever thought that this would become, you know, a global movement. I mean, it's really crazy. And wherever I go, it brings the zero waste community together and then it creates new alternatives. So in some places, they all decide to translate the book, which yeah. then allow, you know, makes that information available to uh, those people. And then other people decide to open an unpackaged store. And that's how things are just kind of like growing all over the place. There is Gérard, who after reading my book, decided that there should be more products sold in returnable packaging. So he's created a whole line of products in returnables. Have you noticed some countries are more receptive to it than others? Europe is definitely much more receptive to it than uh, other parts of the world, and I would say even more than the US, for example. I think in the US, the consumerism is so much part of the, uh, the culture that people are afraid of what other people will say if they don't have the latest gadgets, the latest yeah. toys, or you know, buying secondhand. And I think in Europe, there is, people are not so afraid of living simply. There is an appreciation yeah. for the simple life. Especially in France, actually, because I feel like 
farmers markets and things like that. So exactly. Cool. Everybody uses Yeah, them. and I think that's why uh, pork is actually exploding faster yeah. in France than anywhere else in the world. And I should say actually francophone countries because in Switzerland, in the French side of Switzerland, pork stores are exploding. Ah, okay. uh, there is this uh, French woman actually who after uh, reading uh, the book decided to open the first a uh, box store in uh, in that region and now she's become a franchise so she's oh. opening it's called Shimani and she's opened like a ton of stores it's really exciting how to convince your family um, or people that you're living with to be more supportive of your zero waste lifestyle well everyone is different right yeah. so uh, in my case what worked for my husband was to show him that zero waste was saving 40% on our overall yeah. budget he was not believing me at first and uh, he thought what we were doing was nice for the environment but I don't think he realized how much money we were saving and it's only once he compared the bank statements yeah. uh, between the life before zero waste and the life of zero waste that he saw that number and he said amen <laughs> if we buy something it's only to replace what needs to be replaced a tennis shoe that has a hole in it a t-shirt that is too small and when we buy that replacement well we buy it second hand which by definition costs less but we also buy our food in bulk. Did you know that when you buy anything that is packaged, 15% of the price covers the cost of the packaging? But there are some other people that are interested for the health aspect. For example, someone in their family will be sick. They find it's the things that surround us, the products that they use or they inhale, or yeah. the food that they eat, and then they look for solutions, and they found that the Zero Waste Lifestyle provides all these solutions. Yeah. Now, we found that the Zero Waste Lifestyle is not just good for the environment, as you would imagine, but it's also been great for our health because we found that uh, we've been able to eliminate all toxic products from our lives. I no longer clean with uh, uh, store-bought products. I uh, clean with white vinegar and water. But some other people have been simply drawn to the zero waste lifestyle from how we've presented it. Some people saw pictures of our home and they said, wow, if that's what the zero waste lifestyle looks like, I want to do zero waste. We've given a face to this lifestyle and people have been drawn to uh, the voluntary simplicity, the minimalist aspect yeah. and, uh, and that's great because that's how we got started ourselves. Yeah, and it makes it look so easy and achievable as well, I think, when it well, looks beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the less you have, yeah. obviously the less will have to be uh, maintained, stored and eventually repaired or discarded or thrown away. So the less you have is really the key to everything. So you have to find, you know, what will make your family members yeah. or yeah, your reluctant family members stick. What drives them, what's going exactly. to get them excited about it. Since writing the book, is there anything that you'd like to add to it now? Because the book was written about four years ago, is that right? They are, yeah. So for example, I did not talk in the book uh, about recycling your hair. I don't think I did. So. Uh, so today we recycle our hair. I think I was still using conditioner also when I wrote the yeah, book. Yeah. I no longer use conditioner. So even we evolved in some ways, but it's uh, it's very few little things that have changed. Yeah. So pretty much all still stands. Yes, the, the, our tweets. system is still yeah, yeah. the same. All we had to do was follow five rules in order: refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, rot, and I repeat in order. Any tips for going zero waste at social gatherings? Well, you have to know what kind of social gathering mm -hmm. it is. So if Plastic you think, party, yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> party. If, uh, if I go to someone's house and they're having a get together, you know, they might serve things in reusables, but maybe they won't. If they don't, I'm not gonna make a big deal of it. I'm gonna discreetly go into their kitchen, grab a glass or grab a plate, grab a flatware, and then to respect uh, their uh, their ways of doing things, I simply, you know, will wash up my things and put them back discreetly where it was. So I'm not there to give them lessons. I'm just really grateful for being even invited in their household. You know, I don't travel with a ton of things. So not with a backpack. Uh, no, I really don't. I know some zero wasters that go everywhere with their things. I really don't. Uh, solutions are everywhere. If you're committed to this, solutions will come to you. Yeah. I've been, for example, in this. Uh, I went to this uh, green event for. Uh, a film. Back then I remember I was still going to leave my house to go to events with uh, you know, a real glass, yeah, yeah. just in case uh, they had disposables. But that day my girlfriend came to pick me up and we were running late and I didn't think of bringing my own glass. I left and in the car I'm like, shoot, I forgot my glass. Well, I'll just figure it out. 
And once I got there, uh, they were, although it was a green event, they were serving all their drinks in disposable but compostable cups. Oh, no. Yeah, not really compostable, yeah. but they were kind of greenwashing there. But I was not going to use that disposable cup. So then I looked around and I saw that they had small little tables on which they had mason jars with flowers oh, in them. Okay. So I thought, well, maybe that's what I should do. So I went grabbed a uh, disposable cup that someone had used, I grabbed a vase of flour, I went to the bathroom, I did a little swap and wash, and yeah. then I got my drink in, uh, in the little mason jar. Perfect. Now people ask me, well, why didn't you simply wash the disposable cup that you had swapped the flowers in? Because if I had done that, then it would be a way for me to say, it's okay to use disposable yeah. cups. And it's important to show that there are solutions and hopefully the next event they would have done would be with mason jars instead. Yeah. Every time we take a plastic bag or a free pen from a conference, it's a way for us to say, love these things. Please drill more oil from the ground to create a replacement. And a replacement will be created. So it's extremely important to learn to say no, to stop these things, to stop the demand. You've just got to be creative in the moment, I think. It's think totally boosted my creativity. Yeah. I used to be an artist originally, yeah. I was a painter. As I you know, adopted a zero-waste lifestyle, I started doing less and less because I no longer felt the need to translate my creativity onto canvas yeah. because the zero waste knives are just feeds and boost my creativity. So uh, you definitely need an open mind, a good sense of humor and, yeah. uh, and let it flow. Solutions yeah. will come. Go with the flow. And final question, it's literally just gone from my brain. What goes on in your brain? <laughs> so much about it. What is the most asked question that comes to you from this event? <laughs> a question about a question. I, I don't mention what we what I do. I shouldn't say we because my husband don't use it, but what I do for feminine products. Oh, yeah. And very often a woman will come to me and at the end of my events, because they were not they were too embarrassed yeah. to ask a question in public. And I know when they come to me with their face all red, what they're gonna ask. Yeah. And before they even ask a question, I'm like, I use a menstrual cup. And it's the best thing. Yeah. It's like I really wish I had known about it earlier. Yeah. I beat myself for not knowing. Yeah, I always say it's a game changer. And whether yeah. you're interested in zero waste or not, whatever you're doing, just get a menstrual cup. Yeah, okay. it's the best. It's, it's one of those yeah. things you, you literally beat yourself for not doing yeah. it earlier. Yeah. It saves a ton of money. When you travel, you don't have to fill half your luggage with disposables. You just take one little thing and it's really easy. I'm wearing mine right now. Is that TMI? TMI. She's the proof of like <laughs> happiness wearing a cup. <laughs> there is no TMI. I don't believe in TMI. No, okay. Good. Goodness <laughs> that. Bea, on that note, I'll say thank you so much for sitting down and having a little chat. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah. And I'm yeah. getting a hug. This is awesome. <laughs> and enjoy the rest of your tour. All right, thank you. you. If you only remember one thing from today, it's that buying is voting. Every time you buy something, you have the power to support a practice that is either sustainable or is not. Yeah, right, adjust, arrange. <laughs> 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 yes. Guys, do not do this. <laughs>